Welcome to Visage, an exploration through the centuries in music. My name is Andrew Fultonson, and I'm your host for a program. This Composer in Resonance special is for May 1st, 2023. Today, I'm featuring music by William Laws, May 1st, 1602 to September 24th, 1645. George Guest, May 1st, 1771 to September 11th, 1831. Hugo Emil Alfian. May 1st, 1872 to May 8th, 1960. Leo Salkeld Sowerby. May 1st, 1895 to July 7th, 1968. And Bo Nielsen. May 1st, 1937 to June 25th, 2018. All obviously born on May 1st. William Laws was born in Salisbury, Wiltshire, England, and was baptized on May 1st, 1602. He was the son of Thomas Laws, a vicar choral in Salisbury Cathedral, and brother to Henry Laws, a very successful composer in his own right. It is possible the young William was a member of the cathedral choir there. His patron, Edward Seymour, Earl of Hereford, apprenticed him to the composer John Copraio, which probably brought Laws into contact with Charles, Prince of Wales, at an early age. Both William and his elder brother Henry received court appointments after Charles succeeded to the British throne as Charles I. William was appointed as musician in ordinary for lutes and voices in 1635, taking the post formerly occupied by the late lutenist John Lawrence at the annual salary of £40, but had been writing music for the court prior to this. Law spent all his adult life in Charles' employ. He composed secular songs and music for court masks and doubtless played in them, as well as sacred anthems and motets for Charles' private worship. He is most remembered today for his sublime viol consort suites for between three and six players and his lira viol music. His use of counterpoint and fugue and his tendencies to juxtapose juxtapose, juxtapose, sorry, bizarre, spine-tingling themes next to pastoral ones in these works made them disfavored in the centuries after his death. They have only become widely available in recent years. When Charles' dispute with the Parliament led to the outbreak of the Civil War, Laws joined the Royalist Army. During the Siege of York, Laws was living in the city and wrote at least one piece of music as a direct result of the military situation, the round called See How Cawood's Dragon Looks, a vivid and defiant response to the parliamentarian capture of Cawood Castle about 10 miles from York. He was given a post in the king's lifeguards, which was intended to keep him out of danger. Despite this, while riding with the king whose troops were attempting to free a garrison there, he was casually shot and killed by a parliamentarian in the rout of the Royalist at Roughton Heath near Chester on September 24, 1645. Although the king was in mourning for his kinsman, Bernard Stewart, killed in the same defeat, he instituted a special mourning for William Laws, apparently honoring him with the title of Father of Music. The author of his epitaph, Thomas Jordan closed it with a lacrimose pun on the fact that Laws had died at the hands of those who denied the divine right of kings. Will Laws was slain by those whose wills were Laws. William Laws' body was lost or destroyed, and his burial site is unknown. Fretwork will perform the consort set A6 in C minor.
the music of William Laws. Lost his name for a moment. George Guest was an English organist who was born on May 1st, 1771 at Bury St. Edmunds, England. George Guest was the son of Ralph Guest, who was born at Brosley in Shropshire, settled at Bury St. Edmunds in 1768, was organist of St. Mary's Church there from 1805 to 1822, and he is said to have published some glees and songs. George Guest was chorister of the Chapel Royale and may have been the master guest who was one of the principal singers in Handel's Messiah and miscellaneous concerts for the Hereford Musical Festival of 1783. Guest was organist at I Suffolk in 1787 and at St. Peter's Wisbeck, Cambridgeshire from 1789 to 1831. He died at Wisbeck on September 11, 1831 after a long and severe illness at the age of 60. He was the composer of four fugues and 16 voluntaries for the organ, the cantatas, the afflicted African, and the dying Christian, three quartets for flute and strings, three duets for violoncellos, pieces for military bands, hymns, glees, and songs. We will hear The Lord at First Did Adam Make, performed by organist James Martin and St. John's College Choir, Cambridge, conducted by Christopher Robinson.
Music by George Guest. Hugo Emil Alvian was born in Stockholm, Sweden on May 1, 1872. Hugo Alfian lost his father at an early age and grew up under restrictive circumstances in a poor home. His mother meant so much to him that he never, not even in his old age, reconciled himself to the thought that she was dead, even though she lived long enough to follow his progress to become Sweden's national composer. He was forced to find male role models outside the home and studied at the Royal College of Music from 1887 to 1899, that is 1891, with the violin as his main instrument while receiving lessons from Lars Zettergeist. He also took private composition lessons from Johann Lindgren, a leading counterpoint expert. At the same time, he played the violin at the Royal Opera in Stockholm, 1890-1892. Starting in 1897, Alvian traveled much of the next 10 years in Europe. He studied violin technique in Brussels with Cesar Thompson and learned conducting in Dresden with Hermann Ludwig Kutzelbach. In 1903-1904, he was formerly professor of composition at the Royal Conservatory Stockholm. From 1910, Alvian was music director at the University of Uppsala, a post he held until 1939. There he also directed the male voice choir Orfei Dranker until 1947. He conducted in festivals in Uppsala, Dortmund, Stuttgart, Gothenburg, and Copenhagen. He toured Europe as a conductor throughout his life. He received a Ph.D. honoris causa from Uppsala in 1917 and became a member of the Royal Academy of Music in Stockholm in 1908. Alvian recorded some of his orchestral music in stereo late in 1954. They're the first classical stereo recordings made in Sweden. Alvian's contributions were multidimensional and also included painting and writing. He was a talented watercolorist and once thought to devote himself entirely to painting. He also was a gifted writer. His four-volume autobiography has been called Captivating and provides significant insight into the musical life of Sweden in which Alvian was a central figure for well over half a century. Hugo Alvian died in Falun, Sweden on May 8th 1960. The prodigal son was Alvian's last great test of strength. The ballet was premiered at the Royal Theater in Stockholm in spring 1957 in connection with the composer's 85th birthday. But the music is vital and youthful as never before, and it is said that the composer was especially moved to notice the surprise on the audience's faces when his well-known tune, Johansson, cropped up in the form of a polka from the Roslagen district. Alvian had been inspired to write the ballet by folk paintings, and he tried to emulate the frequently returning motif of the prodigal son, who leaves his father's estate to seek his fortune out in the world, his journey to wealthy Arabia and reception by its queen, his eventual return home, and his father's pardon. All of this is reproduced with charming naivete. He wrote, I sought out melodies which I knew would suit these folk paintings, and where folk music did not suffice, I wrote music myself. I have bound together genuine folk music and my own free compositions in such a manner that I do not believe that many will be able to say which music is mine and which is not. From the full-length ballet, the composer selected a concert suite in seven movements, of which the festive march, the entry of the Queen of Arabia, is a highlight. Alvian wrote, the orchestra grew upon the manuscript paper, and I derived tremendous satisfaction from writing sounds which I knew would produce the effect of gold, silver, and pink, for I see music mostly in color. Mimi Yarvi conducts the Stockholm Philharmonic Orchestra in The Prodigal Sun Suite by Hugo Alfian.
The Prodigal's Son Sweet by Hugo Alfian. Leo Sowerby, son of Florence Gertrude Salkeld and John Sowerby, was born on May 1st, 1895, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Both his parents were British, his father coming from England, and his mother from Canada. In his fourth year, his mother died, and three years later, his father remarried. It was his stepmother who had a vital influence on his life and who turned him to the study of music. He studied music diligently, and he began to compose at the age of 10. His interest in the organ began at the age of 15, and he was self-taught at the instrument. For a while, he studied under Calvin Lampert, but was unable to practice as much as his heart desired because it cost 25 cents an hour to use the organ, and Sowerby could little afford to pay that price. As a result, one day on his way home from a lesson, he stopped at a meat market and procured a large sheet of tough brown wrapping paper and, with ruler and pencil, visited a church. There, he made an accurate, uh, as accurate a sketch of the organ pedals as he could. This he took home and placed under the front of his piano, using it as a pedaliere, practicing daily until he acquired a bit of foot technique. In the meantime, he obtained books from the library on organ construction, including the mechanism of action, touch, and stops, all of which he memorized. He studied composition with Arthur Olaf Anderson, at the American Conservatory of Music in Chicago. Early recognition came when his violin concerto was premiered in 1913 by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. He spent time in France during the First World War in the role of bandmaster. In 1921, he was awarded the Rome Prize from the American Academy in Rome, the first composer to receive this. He began teaching at the American Conservatory of Music in 1924. He received the 1946 Pulitzer Prize for Music for his cantata, The Canticle of the Sun, written in 1944. In 1919, Sowerby became associate organist at Fourth Presbyterian Church of Chicago, and in 1927, he became organist and choirmaster at St. James Episcopal Church in Chicago, which was consecrated as a cathedral in 1955 while he was there. In 1962, after his retirement from St. James, he was called to Washington National Cathedral, to become the founding director of the College of Church Musicians, a position he held until his death on July 7, 1968. He died in Port Clinton, Ohio, while at Camp Wa-Li-Ro, the summer choir camp where he died and had taught for many years. He's buried in Washington National Cathedral. We will hear festival music performed by organist David Craighead with the Fairfield Orchestra conducted by John Walsh.
Festival music by Leo Sarabi. Bo Birger Sandor Nielsen was born in Skellefe, Sweden, on May 1, 1937. He first drew notice as a composer at the age of 18 when his Schwei Stuck, two pieces for flute, bass, clarinet, percussion, and piano, were performed in a 1956 West German radio Musik der Zeit concert in Cologne. He had taught himself composition by listening to the radio, having previously had only basic training from a local music teacher and some experience as a jazz pianist. Though his early style owes much to Pierre Boulez and Karl-Heinz Stockhausen, it also displays a number of personal features. The use of bright percussion sounds behind finely wrought vocal or flute, usually alto flute lines, a nervous fluttering of total tonal nuances, and a feeling for miniature, calculated forms. Because he has chosen to live in the small town of Malmberget, he received the journalistic epithet, the genius from Malmberget. By 1957, Nielsen remained largely unknown in his own country, but had attracted considerable attention in Germany, with a succession of small chamber music compositions characterized by their refined and unusual instrumentation. The best known of these is Frequenzen, 1957, for piccolo, flute, vibraphone, xylophone, electric guitar, double bass, and percussion. His early music is influenced by Boulez and Stockhausen with a refined and unusual instrumentation. It was thought that Nielsen wrote serial music, and he encouraged this belief by putting numbers and proportions in his scores, but he later admitted that he was bluffing, just writing music that sounded as if it was based on serial techniques. From the late 1950s, he began creating electronic music, although his first such compositions had to be realized or interpreted by others at the West German radio, electronic uh, music studio, since he had no access to electronic music uh, equipment. From the early 1960s, his style changed to something approaching late Romanticism, and later he produced film and TV scores. Bo Nielsen died on June 26th, 2018, aged 81. We will hear Déjà Connu, Déjà Entendu, performed by Visby Blassare.
This has been a Fassage Composer in Resonance special for May 1st, 2023. On Monday, June 5th, Visage will present music by Nicolas Bernier, Sir Arthur Somerville, Alfred Yule, Daniel Rogers Pinkham Jr., and Charles Malcolm Dodge, all born on June 5th. I also invite you to visit my Radio Garden station, which is a 24-hour loop of music presently relevant to the month of May. You're listening to Visage and Exploration Through the Centuries in Music. My name is Andrew Faltinson. I'm your host and producer. Thank you.